We're less than three weeks from Election Day and one race that might not be on the top of mind for voters, but still has a huge impact on how Ohio law is handled is in the race for the Ohio Supreme Court. We're joined by Judge Marilyn Zayas running for an associate judge position on the state Supreme Court. Thank you for, for being here. We appreciate it. Oh, I'm thrilled to be here. So this is the first time that party affiliation is being included on the ballot. Why is that significant? Well, I don't know that it's significant. Mm -hmm. um, and in my race particularly, because DeWine Zayas, I think it's pretty clear what's going on here. <laughs> uh, but I do think it's significant because we're moving to becoming more political about the one branch that should be apolitical. Wouldn't it be great if we went in the other direction and there wasn't even party endorsement for the judges? Should political affiliation though play a role in how cases are handled and affected? Absolutely not. The law, the mm -hmm. constitution, and when you go to the Court of Appeals or the Supreme Court, most of the times the record is already built. And so, you know, it's the record, the facts that have been presented, the law and the Constitution, that's really what governs a case. I want to move on to uh, obviously some hot topics. One of them is the overturning of Roe versus Wade. Since then, the state legislature has um, passed some fairly restrictive bans on abortion. Governor Mike DeWine indicated sign a bill that would be basically a near complete ban. Do you foresee that as an issue that will come before the court? Um, and what are the considerations under the Constitution for this? Absolutely. Um, there's a good chance that it will come before the court. It is right now with the trial court. If it gets appealed, it'll go to the Court of Appeals. And then from there, the Supreme Court will first decide if they will take the case. Right. Um, and then if they decide, then they will determine whether it's constitutional or unconstitutional. Right. I think, you know, the other thing to consider is that what this has done is open up a door. So a lot of our individual rights and civil liberties that have come out of the 14th Amendment, um, that perhaps the Supreme Court will continue in this direction, give it to the states to regulate, which means that the constitutionality of those sorts of bills will also be challenged in the future at our Ohio Supreme Court. I want to ask you about where you stand in regard to some top issues surrounding schools. Um, some have called for banning certain topics to be taught in American history um, or how they're taught, uh, especially when it includes uh, things like racism. Where do you stand in your view? Would laws that restrict certain teachings in the classroom, would those be constitutional? Well, at the end of the day, history is history, right? So as far as constitutionality, those are the things that you're going to see challenged at the Supreme Court. Um, and you know, the most important thing when people come to the court is to know that they have a fair chance. So it's really important for judges and justices not to be advocating um, and yeah. not to be providing whatever their personal opinion is, right. because it really needs to be governed by the Constitution. The big story over the summer was, of course, the uh, maps drawn for uh, state and congressional yes. districts. Uh, they were ruled unconstitutional by the current Ohio Supreme right. Court. By a bipartisan co decision, co yes. Correct, uh, because they, were, they, they felt they were drawn on giving the Republic Republican Party an unfair advantage. Um, do you believe that this could lead to challenges that will come before the court? And, and what do you look at? when you're deciding those types of challenges? Well, keep in mind that right now we are voting on unconstitutional maps uh, that are in place only for this cycle. Yes. And so new maps are to be withdrawn. Whoever gets elected in certain positions will, you know, will be comprised of the new commission that will put together the maps. Um, if they are challenged, because of the way the amendment is written, it goes directly to the Supreme Court. Okay. Um, so depending on what occurs, we can right. see a challenge again coming up very soon. Um, you know, ultimately, when you're looking at, you know, you have to look at the language of the Constitution. So we want to have maps that are going to be somewhat balanced because the whole right. goal is that everyone should have a voice. Isn't that what we're all fighting for? Absolutely. You know, when I was a kid, that's what I was fighting for. I grew up in a neighborhood where I felt like I didn't have a voice and that's what I wanted. And so as a judge, it is my job to make sure that everyone has a fair vote. And that's what the goal of the maps are, is for everyone to have a fair vote, voice when it comes to voting. Marilyn Zayas, thank you so much for being here today. We appreciate the insight. Thank you, Darren. And make sure everybody gets out and votes. Thank you so much. Yep, thank you.